Well, hello there. I'm Dr. Albert Chung, and welcome to your friendly proctologist. Thanks so much for joining the community today. I want to thank you personally for being a part of this growth. It's been an amazing journey for all of us to share and our experiences, answer each other's questions. I'm so thankful for all of you. Check out the description box. It has the info for both of the sponsors of this channel. One is Pranicura, which is a cream for your bottom end conditions. And another one is a Sitz Bath Salt product called Revival XR. And both of these, the description, or excuse me, the places to get them are in the description, as well as any other health information like video consultations. I've been getting a lot of great feedback. People find it very worthwhile to get another opinion, to see what I may think about what's going on with them. So you can email me and find out more there. Let's talk about fistulas today. A little detraction from hemorrhoids and the fissures, which I'm usually all about. Cetons, okay, is the topic for today. And ceton is spelled S-E-T-O-N. It's a fancy word for a drain, okay? But the ceton is a very specific word. I don't know if it's used in any other part of the body, to be honest. I think I've only heard of it used in the anal area for anal fistulas. A little background on cetons is that it's a drain that could be made out of really any material. They've been made out of silk, They've been made out of any other suture material. They've been made of plastic or a rubber material. Those are the most common ones that I know of recently. And these are used to, number one, provide drainage for these tunnels of infection, right? Because as, we, as I've talked about in other videos in the past, when you let the skin close, when the holes of the fistula close up, that's when the tunnel with the bacteria inside, they love to play. And when the bacteria start multiplying, producing more fluid, the body tries to fight it, producing more fluid, that's when you get the pockets of pus and the boils, and then starts a cycle of pain, then hopefully it drains out, but it's, it sucks to have that pain there, the redness of the skin, and then wondering if it's gonna pop on its own. So you have to put these cetons in a surgery because you have to know where the tunnel is exactly located. And if that ceton is placed correctly, then the collection of pus has a very, very low chance or low opportunity to create that pressure and a boil that is just, it's just a, a quality of life hamper, right? So my preference is putting in these rubber band type of material, okay? And I find that those to be stretchy they're also more comfortable. They also are easy to pick up and they don't cause so much spasm or pain when you manipulate them. You can be a little bit rough with them and they don't feel like they're kind of cutting in you or anything like that because sometimes the stitches or like a silk material, like a suture, they can be so thin that when you pull on them, it feels like a razor blade is going through you because it's so thin and it, you know, it's just kind of very sharp and piercing. Whereas if it's a thicker rubber band material, you still feel an irritation from that yank or a pull. Like for example, when you're wiping, but you don't get that really sheer razor blade sharp type of pain. Okay, so the first question that many people have asked is how do you take care of these cetons? How do you deal with these things on a daily basis? And so what I guide my patients on is trying to, number one, hygiene. Okay, so after you go number two, if you are at home, I just suggest to take a shower. Okay, or use a squeeze bottle bidet if you don't want to get wet in the shower and have to do all that use that or even a baby wipe okay and after that you just put some four by four gauze in the center of your bottom end okay and you may have to move these rubber bands apart kind of split them if you have multiple if you've got one you know it's not so hard to do just kind of move it to the either side of the gauze that way the gauze can pick up the drainage and keep your skin as dry as possible also if there's any other debris there right any other poop that's sitting around there the gauze will pick it up and all you gotta do is go back in half an hour 15 minutes later and change out the gauze again and you're good as new. Then you go home at the end of the day 
or you know go to heaven at the end of the day you can just throw it out shower and feel fresh again right what about moving around and sitting and stuff like that that one is a little bit tricky and to be honest it takes some adaptation on your part if you have these okay it takes time to get used to them but I find after a while, you do get used to them, you get more comfortable with them, the wounds from the surgery are a lot less sensitive, and so moving around and kind of feeling that stretching doesn't bother you so much anymore. Is it possible to still get spasms and really bad pain from these every once in a while? Yeah, it's possible because let's say you run or you did a sudden movement or it just yanked on the seat on the wrong way. Yeah, it sucks, but it, it does happen every once in a while. Um, and those things are tough to deal with. You know, there really is not a perfect fix for that with cetons, unfortunately. What about when you go to, let's say, what if, if you want to go anywhere with these things? If you're going out to vacation, for example, can you go into the pool? Can you go into the ocean? How about the river? Or can you play in a sandbox without your pants on? <laughs> I can't think of any example. The answer is absolutely yes, you can. Okay. You know, some people may say, oh, Dr. Chum, that's really unsanitary. That's not good for the rest of the people in the pool. Well, let me ask you this. Does everybody wipe their bottom end completely clean? Does anybody not pee in the toilet? Does anybody not fart in the toilet? Do people bathe themselves and scrub themselves down and exfoliate themselves before they get in a swimming pool? No, they don't. Getting into the pool is at your own risk and you already knew that. You're trusting everybody to be sanitary with you. But is the sea tide really going to destroy all that? No, because really it's the same stuff that you see in your poop, the same bacteria. So no, but if you got big wounds, is that a great idea to be in a tub with everybody else? Probably not. But if you've got a small little fistula, what? Who cares? Okay, <laughs> no one's going to notice. I mean, let's be honest here, okay? Okay, so then what about a diet with cetons? Do I have to be on eating something special with these? The answer, in my opinion, absolutely not. N Go back to your old diet, live life, enjoy yourself. These guys, enjoy yourself, enjoy all the foods that you used to eat before. It's not going to make the fistula worse. It's not going to necessarily make the fistula better. It's not going to make the ceton perform any better and nothing. It changes absolutely nothing. The poop will still be the poop and it's still going to get all over the wounds anyway and you're doing the best you can and it's what's appropriate in terms of showering after you go number two and using the gauze pads. It really makes no difference what you're eating. Do I suggest you have soft poop? Yeah, absolutely because hard poops always disturb the area no matter what. You know, you're pulling on the area, it might pull on the sea tines, and so you definitely want soft food. It's just going to make your life easier. Is there any special diet to get rid of the fistulas? Their answer is, there is no evidence for it. We have no clue. All the internet says is that high fiber diet will prevent fistulas or prevent them from occurring or recurring. Sorry, there's no evidence for that. There's really no one can say that that's going to cure your issues. Well, I hope that this video on cetons was helpful for you. The biggest thing with cetons is that there's a period of adaptation where you kind of get to get used to it with the hygiene and everything. The best thing is to use a gauze to keep your skin dry and also keep um, the seed times from even touching your skin um, but really you can enjoy a normal life with these things and after you adapt with them you'll find that you can do everything you used to you can go play golf you can go play soccer do whatever you need to do and go back to work again i hope that helped you take care bye bye